Good morning, I'm Callie. And I'm Trace. Welcome to Eye on the Eagle. We finished our 24th year of our airport high school charity drive and we set a record. This year we raised $54,319.28. Here's a look at the Charity Drive Reveal Assembly that we had yesterday. I think today is going to further cement that there is no other place like Airport High School. I say that, and I say it all the time. My eyes water when I say it. I'm the biggest baby on the face of the earth. Anybody knows me. But there is no place like this place. There is no other place that raises this much money for a nonprofit in Lexington County. And I am proud to say that I'm an alumni of this school. I will always be proud to say that. And I'm more proud to say that I work here. Okay. I love these students, every one of you. You guys give 110%. I call this not charity job week, but I call it selfless week. Because I see a lot of kids that are being selfless and putting other people first. And that is um, that's a beautiful thing to see. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. I just briefly wanted to take a moment on behalf of myself Sabrina, Palmetto Health, the Children's Hospital, the Foundation, um, and all of the volunteers and families of Camp Chemo Programs, oh gosh, <laughs> um, for everything that you guys do for us. Um, you are our single largest donor, and it really, you know, we've been talking with a lot of people about what we do this week, and, and we keep going back to the fact that it is a village. It takes a community to support what we do, and we would not be able to do this without the love and support of everyone in this building. Like Mr. Bailey said, the teachers that give up so much to allow their students to not only have this learning opportunity, but to support us. Um, I know several of our patients have walked these halls, um, and you guys have lifted them up and supported them. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for your time, your energy, your dedication, your hard work, and your love, and your passion for us. Um, for what we do with the Children's Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders and allowing us to support our cancer and blood disorder families um, to provide them with camping experiences um, and programs year-round. You guys really do make a difference um, in not only what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, but in the lives of these families um, and the 900 plus children that we serve. So. Thank you guys again so much from the bottom of our hearts for all that you do. Please feel so proud of yourself because, like Mr. Bailey mentioned, I don't know of any other group, any other high school in the state that makes a donation like this to a nonprofit. So I, it, it is really, it's really jaw-dropping what you guys are able to do. Um, so please feel so, so proud of yourselves um, for all of the hard work that you guys do. Thank you so much. It is with our greatest pleasure and pride that we are able to call Ms. Mallory Deaver and Mr. Daniel Bailey our WIS Mungo Home Community Builders. What an honor. Ms. Reamer and Ms. Stilwell nominated these two deserving community servants back in the fall. We are all so proud. Hi everyone, we are honored to be here today. I'm Mary with WIS um, and I have a special guest with me behind me is Matt Mungo from Mungo Homes, and if any of you follow a series that we do called Community Builder, we love to honor the unsung heroes of our community. And we have never had this happen before the four years that we've been doing this. Uh, we get so many nominations, and a foundation reviews all of those nominations and selects the honorees. But they happen to notice in going through the nominations, like I said, that can be sent in months apart, that there were two people here at Airport High School who have both been nominated and both were more than deserving of this honor. And at this time, I would like to ask that Daniel Bailey and Mallory Deaver come up to the stage. And I want to tell you guys a little bit about them. And I will kind of stand right there in the middle, and then I'm going to hand the phone to, my, uh, to Matt here. Um, Mallory was nominated for all of the work she did with the Elite Food Drive to make sure that people in your community and our community don't go without food and the, and the resources that they need. And this was specifically around the holiday time. So it's been a couple of months since then, and that, that tells you how these nominations back up. Uh, but it wasn't too long once the drive started that another nomination was received uh, for Daniel Bailey 
and for all of the work that you've put in to leading your incredible students here to making this drive possible. Um, and I do want to give a shout out because these nominations, again, came from different folks, but they came from your own here at airport, uh, both Ann Reber and Vicki Stilwell. And uh, we would give them all hard hats. So I'm going to turn it over to Matt now to do the formal presentation, Matt. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, I guess. I'm Matt Mungo with Mungo Homes. And um, first, I'd like to say, wow, $60,000 for Camp Camo is really awesome. And just always remember to help those in your community that need it, be, it, be they sick or in need of financial help. It is very, very important to take care of the community that is good to you. So anyway, um, on another note, we got two separate nominations, like Mary said, for Airport High School Community. And I would just like to say that both Mrs. Deaver and uh, Mr. Bailey have been nominated and chosen as the WIS and Mungo Homes Community Builders. So thank you very much for all the work that y'all do in our community with Camp Chemo and the Less Fortunate. And uh, keep up the good work. You will both get a $1,000 check with a charity of your choice for the Michael J. Mungo Foundation. So thanks again. This is absolutely unbelievable and contributions and donations continue to come in daily. We will be able to send at least 50 campers to Camp Chemo. Be sure to bring in all of your pledge money from Third Block Throwdown. We still have some pledge money that still needs to be turned in. Due to recent tragic events at American schools and violence around the world, we started talking about what we needed to do in case of an emergency. We created a light video to address serious issue. This will be a multi-part segment on staying safe at school. Hey guys, I'm Callie. Today I'm going to show you what not to do and what to do during an active shooter situation. I hope this benefits you and hope you never get into this situation. I hope you enjoy. Attention students, there's an active shooter in the building. We are going on lockdown. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Here is what? Two, do. Do run into an open classroom and shut the door. Do run into the bathroom, run into a stall, lock the door, and put your feet up. Here is what to not do. Don't roll around on the floor screaming. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Don't call your parents to tell them to come get you. Building. That one's gonna get me. I'm probably gonna die. Do not scream for help. Help! 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 Oh my gosh! Help! Help! Don't try to stop the intruder. Even though we try to make this a little bit funny to keep you entertained, this is extremely important. Our goal is for nothing bad to ever happen here, but you need to remember what you are supposed to do at all times. We will host a blood drive on May 15th. Here is some important information. Blood drive this time is going to be May 15th. And we need to raise at least 70 units, which I'm sure we will, and that'll bring our grand total to over 200 units this year. You can sign up for blood drive in Mr. Bailey's room, or you can find anybody with a blood drive sign in the cafeteria. Or you can sign up online. If you go to redcrossblood.org and choose the drive on May 15th, you can do it all online. Or through the Red Cross app, which is really cool, because if you sign up online through the app, you can actually track where your blood goes and that's pretty cool so you get a notification like a month after that your blood saved someone's life in California or Louisiana or Texas. The requirements to donate uh, 16 or older. If you are 16 you need a parent form signed. 17 you do not have, to have a parent form. If you received a deferral letter since the January blood drive you cannot donate at this drive. And there are some things that you should do before to prepare for blood drive like you should drink a water bottle. There's a sheet we give you want to sign up and eat a bunch of red meats to get your iron levels up to that point that you need to be at. 
Are you struggling the last few weeks of school? Here's Taylor's The Classified High School Survivor. High school full of bullies, crazy teachers, and decent school lunches. Taylor Hunt, that's me and my two best friends trying to survive the impossible to create a two minute news piece that help you survive high school. Learn it more, expand it out. Will I survive? There's some doubt. Always fear, go away. Break everything that's in my way. I... Taylor's a classified high school survivor guide. Results won't vary. Oh, hi. I'm Taylor. I go to airport high school. Things get pretty rough. Right now, we're in a pretty tight spot, but my guide will help you knew you survive. Oh, hey there, David. What's up? Hey, Taylor. You want to help me study for that test tomorrow? That's just sitting. Oh, no. I was working so much, I forgot to study. Can you help me with one of your tips? Yes. Try to get some time off work before a big test so you can study at your leisure. Also, don't cram. It will just stress you out. Does that help? Well, it would have, but the test is today. I have no choice but to cram. Or... If you need some help, ask a teacher or a friend. Lunch is always a good time if your test is in third or fourth block. But if it's in first and second, study during breakfast. Also, try telling a teacher your situation. They might be sympathetic. Wow, thanks Taylor. I'll tell you how I do on the test. All right, bye. Hey, what'd you make on your test? Look, I got an 85. Hey, that's pretty good. Will you help me next time? No, you're welcome though. Bye, dude. Thanks, Taylor and David. Farah sat down with our interim principal, Mr. Frank Giovanelli, to discuss his return. Good morning, Airport High School. I'm Farah Deal here with Mr. Frank Giovanelli, and I'm going to be interviewing him on our next upcoming nine weeks. So, Mr. Giovanelli, how many years have you been a principal? I was principal at Airport High School from 2003 to 2013, so 10 years here and 27 years in uh, administration. Wow. Um, what are your goals for airport for the last quarter? I would say to students the same thing I said to staff, do what we do and do it well. You know, we have rules and regulations in place and um, we have uh, events and clubs and all kinds of things. Just do what we do and, and do it well for the remainder of the year. Are there any changes you intend to make for the last quarter? No major changes. Um, we're doing some things behind the scenes that students probably won't notice. Uh, as far as how we operate, but uh, no, there, because a lot of the things we do go back to when I was here. A lot of them are still uh, somewhat the same, and, and the new things are all good things, so no, we don't envision any, any changes in the next two months. What made you decide to do it? I've told people it was just a, a set of things that kind of came together at this point. You know, airport's always uh, been close to my heart. Uh, it was hard to retire at the time, but uh, you know, it was just a, a matter of, of the people involved and, and hoping that I could help out and make a difference. What has been the most challenging situation you have faced um, throughout your career? Well, in 40 years, there's a lot of challenging situations. Um, you know, as a, as a teacher, coach, administrator, there are a lot. Um, but I will say this one thing, just because it's, it's relevant to today, is, and that's cell phones. <laughs> You know, we've, we've had to adjust, everybody's had to adjust with cell phones and it is a, it is a technology we need to embrace and, um, but for an old timer like me, it's, it's been hard to, you know, adjust to, to how cell phones are utilized in schools now. Uh, and it, but it is the future. Correct. Um, what steps will you take to get to know the students and staff at airport? Well, this is one of those steps right here. Uh, this interview is, is something that I hope will help. And, and of course, I've asked students to introduce themselves to me in the halls. I've been in a number of classrooms, uh, you know, talking with students. And, and I try to be visible and be outside as much as possible. And, and then plus, I'll be at, at uh, a lot of events, uh, but just doing as many things as I can like that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Farah. We are so happy that a former Eagle is flying to the end of the year with us.
How far has Airport ever gone in playoffs? We've made it to the third round on multiple occasions. What is after third round? After third round, uh, depending on what part of the state you're in, this year we're classified as upper state, so we'd be playing in the upper state championship if we make it past the third round. Being a young team, what attributes do you think a team has to carry us farther than the third round? I think it's a mixture between the older players and the younger players and trying to find the right chemistry on the field and everybody competing at a high level. If we can do that, we have the potential to go past the third round. Thank you so much, Morris. Thank you, Farrah.